Hello everyone and welcome to Officially Unofficial TV. Our conversation today is about the differences between personality and character and why understanding these differences can make such an impact in our lives. And my guest, Khalid Bay. Hi Khalid. How are you? Good, how are you? Welcome back. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Khalid Bay. I am an author, a uh, public speaker. I usually write uh, books that are uh, intended to empower people, uh, you know, whether they are about relationship or uh, you know, capacity for thought or government. Uh, I am also an elected official in the city of Syracuse. I've been elected for a decade now uh, and heavily involved in, in you know, always push to sustain my passion for empowering others. And so that's why I write. That's why I do the work that I do. And again, uh, I appreciate you having me. But Khalid, your books, whenever I'm reading some of your books, I'm like <sighs> on the edge of my seat because you love offering very extreme examples to make your point, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's necessary to uh, <clears throat> to help draw a contrast and in a lot of respects I use extreme examples uh, I think extreme examples provide some simplicity mm -hmm. makes it a little easier for absorption and so uh, sometimes you have to I always say unfortunately people often need crisis in their life to change and so with extreme examples you can kind of get really get a person's attention and, and, and you know get some real consideration from them so that's the approach and so far it's been effective toys uh, personality versus character, the definition, please. Well, you know, the one thing I tried to clarify you know, in our society, we're very loose with language. You know, we, we say words like ignorant, you know, and imply stupid. We say words like stupid and imply dumb. Uh, when in fact, none of those words mean the same thing. Similarly, uh, we assume uh, that it, or speak in a way that suggests that we uh, have come to the conclusion that personality and character are the same, and they're not. You know, person. You know, character speaks to that inner part of you, that that thing that is consistent about you, that sits at your root, uh, as opposed to personality, which is usually a concoction of developed responses to stimulus. So, I use the example in the book that you know we all encounter experiences, the things we enjoy. We indulge in the things we don't. We separate from or protect ourselves from. And over time, we go through this continual shaping and molding until we create this idea of ourselves that's comforting for us. Mm -hmm. This is what we present to the world or to the various you know, uh, areas we may travel into. This is our personality, usually fueled and rooted in emotion, as opposed to that thing that is more authentic about us, uh, which is certainly uh, our character. Why would someone... <laughs> Why, why is someone attractive to a personality and, and not to a character? Well, you know, the thing is, there's a tendency in humanity to immediately identify the negative. Mm. Uh, I always use an example. You know, you put a number of us in a, in a cafe and it's, it's bustling and people are communicating and talking. And there's a, there's a guy, an unidentifiable guy, just outside the window staring in the window. You know... And for every person who's in that cafe that's enjoying the moment, from the moment they recognize that guy, that'll be all they'll see after a while. The concern for safety and security will overshadow any good thing that's happened, and even if the good things happen in abundance. And so in the name of security and preservation, even though this is not known to the individual, people become preoccupied with the things that can injure them, the things that could cause injury or the things that they fear more than uh, the many good things that could potentially transpire in their lives. And so our tendency to be fearful, our tendency to seek security at all costs is why personality, emotion, and, and all, you know, fear is obviously emotion, but all things related to it are in a predominance in any particular person's presentation. Oh my gosh. I mean, it, it, I'm still kind of okay because in your book, you mentioned, you know, societal conditioning, 
right? And how yep. like this influences a lot in both personality and character. But when it comes to personality, I feel like personality can change, right? Personality is easier to change than character is. Is that, am I correct in thinking that? Well, yeah, without a doubt, you know, certainly a person's inner self can evolve. You know, there's a, there's a lot of discussion, whether it is uh, thorough or not on the subject out and about and throughout social media. But personality is more or less the reflection of the things we are feeling. Right. And so when you when you're talking about the encountering of the world, you know, we, we go again. I'll go back to the example I mentioned earlier. You know, we encounter things that may uh, cause pain or things that may be pleasurable to us. Mm-hmm. You know, and those things, depending on the impact it has on us, shapes our response or our behavior to those things. Mm-hmm. As a result of those experiences, we develop a certain level of sensitivity to ideas, to actions and, and, and the like. And so and then we automatically even even innately, and this this is the thing that's, that's tough about it. This is why it's tough for people to really grasp it and or understand it. Our our responses are a matter of impulse, right? Mm-hmm. It's not just usually no intelligence involved with it. Habit doesn't require intelligence. Habit mm-hmm. is automatic. It happens without practice you know, or, or without attention. You know, it, but it takes a lot more attention to break a habit, right? And so, when you're talking about a condition, people being conditioned to respond a certain way, you know, they say that you know, you grow up in an environment where alcoholism is rampant. You know, the society suggests that the likelihood is that a child will become alcoholic. Mm-hmm. Maybe, mm-hmm. you know, if you've been in abusive relationships, the likelihood is every relationship you'll encounter. Innately, you will assume it to be abusive. You will be sensitive to a number of things. And so the ability to exist in a relationship after an abusive one becomes tough. Right. In the same way, you know, the many embarrassments that I use as an example, a teenager who gets picked on all the time in school, mm-hmm. you know, by some person who is, you know, don't know him, but pick on him for no other reason than to hide their own feelings of inadequacy and the like. They make this person a target. They deflect all of their feelings of inadequacy on that person. Uh, and that person will likely, especially in, our, in, in teenage years, succumb to that pressure, be affected because there's a preoccupation with what people think. And our society, we unfortunately, many of us determine our value uh, based on what we have with the people with whom we associate, the, the, the job or the supposed worldly accomplishments we achieve, this is how we validate, validate ourselves. The danger of that, of course, is if and when those things go away, we devalue ourselves in contrast mm-hmm. and, all, and sometimes to, to a person's detriment. Mm-hmm. It's very dangerous to allow yourself to be pulled to and fro. Uh, by societal influence, by the influence of friends, and even the influence of family. Mm-hmm. You know, we're all learning, but none of us are experts. And so to endeavor to separate ourselves, to endeavor to take control over our own ideas of value, separate from what society says, mm-hmm. is quite the feat. Uh, but it doesn't change the fact that it needs to happen. Otherwise, you kind of remain in the, remain in the struggle. Mm-hmm. So would you say that character is built out of habit? No, personality is built out of habit. When you're okay. talking about the inner part of a person, and let's be clear, most people never meet that person. Mm-hmm. You know, but I, I always say, you know, when you spend your time, when you, you know, you do something out in the street and then you go home. Mm-hmm. And while you're home, you experience an embarrassment when you reflect on the thing you did or said when you were out and about. Mm-hmm. That thing that's checking you is the more authentic part of yourself, right? That's what that's what qualifies as the character of a person. It is consistent. It does not change. I, I use a comical example of the guy who posts himself up on the block and every person who walks by, he gives them the ice grill or the stone face. But nobody stands in the corner of their living room and ice grill their little brothers and sisters or their mother or their spouse, right? Right, right? And so that is a practice performance. If it wasn't a practice performance, you would do it everywhere you go. Mm-hmm. But the fact that you don't do it at home shows that it's not really rooted in anything. And so that performance is more about protection and preservation 
than it is anything authentic. The more authentic person is probably at home hugging and kissing and watching girly movies or whatever they do, <laughs> as opposed to being out, you know, putting on or presenting some other idea. People are uncomfortable with being in the world as they are when they're home without spectators. And when you can achieve that, then you've really, you've really accomplished something. And that's why they say, like, you don't know someone until you live with them, <laughs> right? Well, you know, I, hey, hey, when we talked about love on the will, nobody likes the idea. I said, <laughs> after a while, you know, when the, when the appearance of the person and all the things you like, all the glitz and gam glamour become furniture, the only thing that's left is what's coming out of their mouth. <laughs> and if what they're saying doesn't drive with what you're saying, that relationship is already on a downturn. It's already almost over. You know, so the same applies, you know, when whether you're talking friendship and, and, and or people at work, you know, people put on and wear many faces throughout a given day. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're by yourself, you're a certain way. When you're with your spouse, you're a certain way. When you're with your family, your kids, you're a certain way. When you walk outside, you're a certain way. When you go to work, when you go to church, when you go to the club, every time there's an adjustment to the environment, nothing is hardly ever authentic. Mm -hmm. that's, well, the world is what it is. That's sad, Kalish. Like, yeah, well, everybody's fronting. That, that's the way I say it. You know, and, and but it's a human problem. You know, it's not to point out. Obviously, mm -hmm. this is not specific to any particular individual. We've mm -hmm. all gone through it, and it takes one to know one. You know, I only speak to it in the way that I do because I know what I used to do, especially as a teenager. Teenagers, you know, teenagers struggle with establishing value and identity. That mm -hmm. that's their lesson. And so, you know, when you understand it and, 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 you know, we do our best to provide uh, solutions for people when we've had successes in those areas. You know, this goes back to the saying, you can't provide a solution for people you haven't found for yourself. Right? But unfortunately, in our society, the blind leading the blind is a, is a normal occurrence. You know, there's a thousand and one people talking about all these ways to be centered. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, but that same person then goes home and beats his wife or she goes home and, you know, and she neglects her children or, or mm -hmm. something. Similar. So uh, and, and again, I don't say that to criticize or crucify, but truth is truth and therefore needs no apology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and in your book also, you mentioned, you know, going off of that, how someone experiences, you know, something in their lives and you would think that, okay, we learn from it, but then it, the pattern keeps repeating and keeps repeating. And that that's why I got a little bit confused. I'm like, okay, so is that building character or is that their character that their personality is to spend money, but their character is to repeat this pattern? Is that what it is? Well, you know, without a doubt, let's be clear, you know, through our personality struggles, we certainly sharpen steel, right? Mm -hmm. Our character evolves, it becomes stronger. That's part of the process. That's what's supposed to happen. The problem is, as you've mentioned, people repeat, you know, they relive Groundhog Day. You know, I always reference the movie with Bill Murray. <laughs> you know, every morning he gets up, he's stepping in the same water puddle and the same thing over and over again until he decides to try something different. People are, again, it doesn't require effort to mm -hmm. exhibit a habit. It requires effort to break one. And so when people are, uh, you know, you get up every day. I, I'll use this example. Everybody who's watching may not realize, or you may, that when you're getting out of the shower, you dry off the same way all the time. <laughs> You've never even heard this talk. The purposeful effort to change how you dry off will be uncomfortable, so much so that by the next day or the day after, you'll go right back to the routine. That is an example of how ease allows people to fall back into bad practices. Mm. It's much easier to do what you're accustomed to doing, even if what you're doing is detrimental to your health, your family, your relationship, whatever. And so it takes will, it takes deliberate decision, you know, in order to break that kind of pattern. But in order to break it, you have to realize you're doing it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's tough, though, because, you know, the other person, what's, for someone to realize that they're doing it, someone has to bring it to their awareness. And, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then they're like, what? And depending on their character and how they accept criticism, 
you know, they're going to either put in the work or well, not. Well, yeah, in most instances, that's a fight, mm -hmm. you know, um, because the person feels as if they're being exposed. You know, I, I mentioned before, you know, I, I believe I mentioned when we last talked, most people talk about the fear of death or the fear of how they die. Uh, and it's usually the fear of how one dies that people dread, right? That's the idea they're most concerned with. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the idea of leaving too soon. But I think parallel to that is the uh, the feeling of powerlessness, embarrassment, right? Vulnerability. You know, to be at the whim of somebody else's will is a dangerous position f for most people. They don't like the idea of being exposed or being made to feel vulnerable. And when a mm -hmm. person calls you on something that you innately know you do, they're exposing you. And so right. that'll, that might be a fight. It might be a divorce. It might be a war, you know, uh, between countries. But it, it's still the same. And, you know, it's, it's very hard. And so this this is the value of a book like this, you know. It's mm -hmm. much better to mm -hmm. figure it out on your own than to have the world expose you, you know. And so, <laughs> For real. Hopefully. But will they pick up the book uh, if they're not aware of what's going on? Right. No, no, no. Most people live. You know, I had referenced before a, a bit of a uniform velocity. Most people live in a suspended state of, mm -hmm. you know, illusion mm -hmm. and they don't know they live there. They believe, you know, this was the meaning behind the Truman Show with Jim Carrey. You know, him and his sister grew up in their parents basement and they lived their entire lives there. But they they never experienced anything else. So to them, that was all there was mm. until. They made a mistake and went outside one day, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, <laughs> something caught their attention and made them change their routine. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, everything in that basement, everything in that house is the only reality they've ever experienced. And, and so it's the same thing. I'll give this example. If, uh -huh. if you don't mind, I'll do this quick. You know, if I, if I raise my children in the house, if they've never experienced the world and you know, if they did their chores, you you do a chore, earn you a certain number of pebbles. And so if you wash dishes, you got four. And if you clean your room, you got five. Now, in, in, in response to that, you know, a certain number of pebbles will buy you opportunity. You know, you can play with your toys. You can watch TV for a certain amount of time. And after a while, you send these kids, they reach 18, 19, 20 years old. And for the first time, you send them out into the world with what they know to be money. Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. the they put sodas and chips on the counter and they put rocks up there right right <laughs> all they know is the pebbles <laughs> they're not going to understand what that store clerk is bugging about when they say you know hey where's your money at what do you mean my money's right there <laughs> and you're talking about this the space that people live in where whatever they're thinking and experiencing is all that's true to them mm -hmm. anything outside of that is, is an absolute disturbance and could be a cause of conflict for sure. And so, you know, what, but that conflict is only reminiscent of the type of things that's going on inside of them anyway. Mm hmm. And the dangerous part about it is being with a, for example, like uh, having uh, a relationship with this person if their mind is not flexible. Because someone could know something and then it's brought to their awareness, oh, there is also another way. But they might not take this if they're not flexible, if their mind is not flexible like that. And those, yeah. that's really hard. That's really hard. Well, you know, what you're talking about and the way you're describing it reveals a very disheartening reality. Most people won't ever figure it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, Khalid, I'm going to go to a couple of comments you have coming in. Um, okay. okay, so... One of them, it goes like, I'm going to add it to here. It's like, yes, our mind and bodies are conditioned by our experiences. In turn, it can affect our health as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And then we go <laughs> to the comment of the towel example. <laughs> if I change my towel drying, my days are off. <laughs> and, and it's true because it, it's like any other habit. It's like, you know, if, if we're attempting weight loss, right? Mm -hmm. You know, obesity is not about the food in itself more than it is the muscle memory of putting food in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you have to disturb that practice of constantly putting food into your mouth and, and you know, and putting your digestive system into action. You disturb it by not feeding it for a while. You know, it's the same for a workout when you're accustomed to gluttony and laying around and, you know, 
And, you know, I, I can do this. I can grab the remote and lay around all day. <laughs> but some, at some point, in order to tighten those muscles up and get your, your circulation going, you got to disturb that and go jump on a treadmill. <laughs> it's hard to do. It's hard to maintain that kind of disturbance. Mm -hmm. you, know, it, you know, these are external examples of the same type of work required for how we think, except how we think mm -hmm. is much, much harder to change. For sure. For sure. So Khalid, I know in your book, you mentioned a lot about, you know, uh, relationships and how, you know, characters is just main, whether it is a friendship, a romantic relationship, or even a work relationship, right? So how do we, right, when we're meeting someone and we're trying to get into a relationship with them, how do we, like, tap into their character sooner than later to see if they are of good character? The struggle, one, one struggle with relationship and friendship um, is the effort by one person to infringe on the will of another person. See, that's the thing. Nobody, I, I don't believe many people, let me not say nobody, many people will not be comfortable with the idea of only worrying about themselves and not trying to impact, you know, how the other person thinks or behaves. It may sound strange, but, you know, and I mentioned in this book that everybody on this planet has an absolute inalienable right to choose. That is their absolute power. And while it may not be a smart choice, I'll use an extreme to drink Drano. Hmm. Of course. And it's still your power to do so, no matter how much anybody tries to stop you. Mm -hmm. You would hope that people would figure out that doing that would be very detrimental to their health. And, and that, you know, extremes, again, are necessary for people to be able to draw a contrast. Similarly, mm -hmm. there are other things that people do that is detrimental to their health or to their being. Mm -hmm. If you want to be with a person, and that person expresses that there's a difference in or a conflict in you know in your behaviors and you don't want to change it you have to accept the fact that that relationship is not going to happen you know or it won't be sustainable relationship mm -hmm. friendship job it doesn't matter but our society is, does a couple of things one it has convinced everybody that they are in fact entitled to their own opinion um and that's fine but opinions are personal and don't mean much when the, world, the rest of the world is considering it. Uh, the other thing that our society has done has convinced everybody, and I mentioned this before, that everybody else has to care about what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Nobody has to listen to you. Nobody has to give consideration to anything you're saying. I mentioned that the last time we talked. Nobody has to give consideration to anything I'm saying. See, the thing, I'll speak for myself, I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. I offer a suggestion where I think it will probably do something, uh, but I am not attached to the fact that it needs to. Right. I put it there. If it does something, <laughs> fine. If it doesn't, I don't know. I'm gone anyway. I'm not there to witness what it does after that. Yeah. And most people are not in that space where they can actually mind their own business. <laughs> this, is, this is what we need to learn. <laughs> Americans are nosy. So we haven't learned to mind our own business. We haven't learned to stick to, you know, we always make suggestions. Like, I, And I always mention in my books, you know, I'll paraphrase. You know, it's just... So it's just from where I'm sitting that I offer, but you don't, you know, you don't have to listen. Uh, you make your own decision on whether the stuff is useful or not. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing's for sure. Truth will always reveal itself. And if you're still encountering the same struggle, then maybe you should pay attention. Oof. Not? You should say failure that. Failure, right? Right. right. Even yeah. failure is a choice. So. Yeah. And in and, and the the extreme examples that, that you out of the many extreme examples that you give, one of them was that like if a lady, right, she wants to take it, she walks through this alley every single time there is a shortcut, she knows the danger of taking the shortcut. But one day she takes it and you know, something bad happened to her. And then you go on, it was her choice. It was her choice. It happened to her because of the choice that she made. And to me, that was like, no, it was the guy's choice. You know? Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. When I did a lecture at a college, <clears throat> there was a psych professor there. She struggled with that one until an explanation was provided. Mm. 
Mm. You know, and, and that's one of those extremes that I reference that you need to catch people's attention. You need to make them pay attention. And oftentimes you need to present something that will qualify as a crisis for them to do that. <clears throat> so the segment you talk about it references a woman who walks home from work every day. I'll try to do this fast. And every day she passes an alley and she knows that the alley will get her home a few minutes faster, but she avoids it for the fear that that danger lurks there. And so every day she walks past this alley and each day the consideration to take the alley increases to one day she walks and she decides I'm going to take this alley to get home faster, right? The convenience trumped safety. She takes the alley and what she feared happens. A guy jumps up from behind the, the dumpster and he violates her. The statement is while the guy most certainly is 100% responsible for his actions. The person who made the decision to take the alley had power over the circumstance prior to that happening by the choice that was made. That doesn't blame, that's not victim blaming, right? Every person who does something, whether they cause an injury to themselves or anything, sits back and say, Oh, if I had only gone the other way. Everybody does that, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I just said it out loud. Mm-hmm. Everybody does that. When you spend your money and then you get that bill back, you, I probably shouldn't have did that, right? You know, when you do something that causes physical injury to yourself, you'll think to what you could have did to avoid it. Mm-hmm. This is all This is all that is saying that, you know, we don't. we often don't realize the power we have over any circumstance, mm-hmm. that our ability to choose often dictates our reality. And so, that yeah, that's a harsh example. Mm-hmm. That does not excuse the criminal who did what they did. That person needs to be under the jail. Mm-hmm. You know, but the fact is that person in that example is going to be saying, I know I shouldn't have went that way. Mm-hmm. You know, and so the you're talking about the convenience usually fueled by and rooted in emotion and comfort versus the intelligence rooted in more or less the character of the person that was saying, don't go that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know danger is there, but comfort, ease is what made the person choose what appeared to be the easier route. This is always the case in our thinking, our behavior, and relationship, jobs, money, spending. That's just a very gross example, but in principle. Yeah. Now, here's an example of how the emotion and habit gets away with you. The persons who would get caught up in the storyline miss the entire point. <laughs> right? There's an example of personality disturbing the moment. Emotion clouding the judgment. What's true? The truth is we all make choices and to be deliberate in our choices, to be aware of our choices in every moment ensures us a greater chance of efficiency when we make those choices. Mm -hmm. We won't always be perfect, but we'll, we'll certainly be better than what we were when we allowed our emotion to dictate how we behave and how we choose. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Khalid, that's, that's really, that's, that's true. I mean, like comfort, right? And we make decisions based on that just because, and, and that's yeah, dangerous, you know, right? Yeah, well, the thing, people think they know what reality is. Mm-hmm. Reality goes back to what I said before that did not sound good. You know, okay. the squirrel meeting his Mack truck in the street, right? Very unfortunate circumstance. Even, you know, we see squirrels, we, we avoid them. Right. But. Regardless of the outcome, life will keep moving. Hmm. And so the question is, you know, is life adjusting to, you know, emotional human beings and their thought processes? Or is it that we need to do a better job at understanding and respecting what life is in fact? Hmm. You know, so when you when you make choice, I always say I never make I do my best not to gain at the expense of other people. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that is not something that is always considered. And so, as I mentioned with the little girl picking on the girl in the cafeteria in the book, she's not considering the damage she's doing to preserve or to prop up herself. Let me throw a cheap shot right now. I always talk about the fact that there's a lot of charlatans in government. You know, people run for office for the significance they believe it provides them. They don't run to do any work. Mm -hmm. It's circumstances stay the same no matter who you elect. 
yeah, you know, we got to pay attention to that. Right. But this, this is what you have, you know, right? Status and things that allows or, or that gives us some assigned idea of value mm-hmm. is what we attract to. Mm-hmm. And when we lose that, we don't know what to do. Hmm. There was uh, the, 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 oh my gosh, you know what, before we continue, let's go to a couple of comments that you have coming in, Khalid. Um, I don't know how to pronounce this name. I'm sorry. That's uh, Cho, counselor. Oh, OK. Yeah. There we go. How's your my piece? <laughs> Which one is more temporary, character or personality? Personality is temporary. In fact, it's so temporary, it changes depending on the room you walk into. <laughs> Right. Your character is always there, but it's always drowned uh-huh. under the, all of this sludge and, and performance. Right. And so, you know, uh, again, show that the struggle, if a person, you know, imagine, you know, nobody does cartwheels. Well, you know, you might, but nobody does cartwheels in the middle of the living room, you know, uh-huh. and do, you know, uh, the, the thing is, how, how can you be in the public as you are when you are by yourself without spectators, without no additives, no preservatives? Can you be that same person no matter where you are, mm-hmm. no matter what you're doing, no matter what your job is, no matter who you marry? Can you be consistent? That mm-hmm. is the struggle. That is what's permanent. And that's what people need to try to identify with. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like in terms of because there was another question that came in also regarding dating and how can you identify this character traits before you actually get into a relationship? Is it, is there a way to, because if the character is so hidden. <laughs> nah, there, there's no, there's no different color light depending on the person that shows up. I, I use that as an example. We wish there was a button you could push to determine if a person was authentic or not. Right. 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 You know, the idea though. Now here, here's the thing. Here's an answer that we may not be comfortable with. Authenticity sees authenticity. If a person is a compulsive liar, similar to the kids who live their entire lives spending rocks, they'll believe that their condition to lie is a normal occurrence. So much so, if I'm a liar, you must be. Mm. If I'm fronting, you must be. If I am unauthentic, you must be. And so people by that idea, unknown to themselves, treat people as if they are guilty of the same things that they're guilty of. In that same respect, it takes for a person to clean themselves up in order to be able to see a clean person. It's my position. I don't believe math lies and everything is all math to me. I know. Don't go in with math, Khalid, because I'm telling you, just don't do it. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much. If you guys have any questions, please keep them coming. Thank you for being here and sharing the space with us. Um, all right, Khalid. So here's another question for you. Um, from what I'm hearing from Susan, from what I'm hearing, personality can be changed and get counseling on, but character is your permanent way. You know, you know what I would to, to further clarify the idea of character. It's, it's like the mustard seed, right? The tree with all of its strength and all of its beauty exists within the mustard seed. What's required is the proper type of nurturing and, and you know and tilling for the tree to grow and become as strong as it can be, right? And so the water and the dirt and the wind and the weather conditions and the like, all of that that creates the environment or or all of that that is the environment that surrounds the mustard seed and or the tree, I would liken to the personality. It is the elements, it is the circumstances that help the tree become what it is. Now, either the weather conditions and all things around it will hinder the tree's growth or the tree will be strong enough to push through. This is also the symbology of the rose appearing through the concrete, right? Mm -hmm. It was strong enough in its root to withstand and break through concrete. So the individual has to be strong enough in their own route to withstand and break through all of the illusion that they've created mm-hmm. over time. And if we sit back and we reflect on it, you know, let's 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 examine behaviors we've exhibited in certain spaces over time. And let's let's create a checklist and be honest about whether it was authentic or not. Mm-hmm. And watch how few authentic things we'd likely check off 
Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is not a matter of good or bad or you're horrible or not. Nah, we're learning. Right? We're all yeah. learning. You know, and, and no one person is better than another. Uh, but that is the work, you know. And so without a doubt, character evolves. It becomes stronger. Uh, but I think a more appropriate way to say that, uh, to, to answer more to Suzanne's point, is it that character grows or are you uncovering what's already there? Mm. You know, the more accurate answer is that you're uncovering what's there, right? The true core of the thing is, be, is beneath the layers. It's not really stretching or growing in any particular way. You're just trying to gain access to it underneath all of the, the the sludge and other things that have been compiled over the years, over the experiences. And so the more and more we peel away the layers, the closer and closer we get to something authentic. Mm -hmm. You know, and the person who goes home doesn't stand in the corner and mean mug his sisters and brothers and doesn't do things in the house that he or she does in the street. Mm -hmm. So those behaviors that we may see outside could be called into question. Because you look different, you behave different, you function different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The environment is not around you. Mm -hmm. You know, let's get closer to whatever that is. And and if that thing is fearful, if it's checking you every time you call go in the house and it creates discomfort, then that needs to become your best friend. You know, that's that's the one who's that's your, you know, they, they call it the little voice of the consciousness that always tells you when you're going wrong. Yeah, pay attention mm -hmm. to him or her. <laughs> you know, try to become that person and be that person all the time. Yeah, and 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 that's uh, you actually mentioned a lot in in your books, and that leads me to the next question. Um, when you say, okay, this uh, in this relationship, the example that you gave about you know the man being this and that, and then they broke it off, and he comes back, he sees her with somebody else, and he comes back, and he's like, hey, baby, I miss you, and she's like, man, and then he's like, hey, can we go back together? And her first intuition is no, no. Right? right? Let's continue that, Khalid. Yeah, but after all of the emotion and the replay, the time traveling comes into play. You know, she, you know, the, the human being has an uncanny ability to time travel back into some past pain and reinvoke it as if it just happened in the moment. This is why you see people argue over something that happened 10 years ago <laughs> and they had the same argument over and over again, right? Or last week when they've argued three times since on the same topic with the same language with no change. And so in a similar way, you know, the person she encounters him, he, you know, I want to get back. She says her, her mind says no, but then she thinks about it and all the good times come into play and then the emotion and tides start to, you know, crash against the shores and everything boils over and she says, okay, you know, but her, her more authentic self is like, Gee, here we go again, mm -hmm. you know, because, and, and you know, that's the case because when you make that decision based on your feel and your emotion, your fear, you continue to question it the whole time. You question whether you made the right decision, the fear, of the disappointment is constantly replaying. And, you know, there's always this voice that's almost certain, like, you know, it's gonna happen, <laughs> no, right? And, and so we allow ourselves to be drowned, you know, in, 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 in the confusion and the illusion. Mm -hmm. And so our better judgment gets suspended, you know, because we got accustomed to a thing. We, mm -hmm. people feel lost, they fear the breaking of a routine. They fear, you know, when you have this grandiose idea of what you think love and relationship is, then that is what you will chase uh, unsuccessfully. I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you because <laughs> most people don't know what it is. You know, and so, right. Well, you know, you have to create your own version, man. You no know, cookie cutter version of that. You know, but people think it is. And so, you know, if I don't get what I'm seeing on soap operas or, on, on uh, you know, on what I hear and soft rock and R&B music, then it ain't working right. <laughs> if I don't have what my parents appear to have, well, you wasn't around them your whole life. You don't know what they have. Mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, and, and you're totally different. And so is the other person you may encounter. And so, you know, people that that goes back, though, to the unfortunate effort of one person to infringe on the next person's will. Mm -hmm. They're trying to fit them into a box of your own experiences, which is not theirs as opposed to creating new experiences with them. You know, mm -hmm. it takes a more alert, more responsible person to give consideration to the autonomy of the other person they're talking to. Mm -hmm. you know, 
Right. And so, you know, but in that same respect, let's get back to the topic of personality versus character or what is essentially the, the underlying message, <clears throat> excuse me, in the key to character. It is that, you know, be consistent. Mm -hmm. be, regardless of who's watching, don't allow yourself to be pulled out of character. And let me be clear. People always talking about acting out of character when they yelled at somebody or when they know anytime you talk about a character. So you might be out of character the minute you look in the mirror and you envision whatever outfit or hairdo you putting on through the eyes of everybody who you think will see you. And that ultimately dictates what you do. Mm -hmm. You know, you've already lost at that point, you know, but that's a struggle we all have. Mm -hmm. We have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Khalid, the way you put things is just like make people just be thinking over here, like, I won't get out of my house. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm telling you, but it is so true, though. I mean, it is so true. And this is why it's so important. And this is why moms usually advise their daughters and fathers advise their daughters and son. Take your time when you are meeting someone because you don't know their true character and in fact you can live with someone for years and still not know their true character i always say mothers never know their kids that grow up to be serial killers see another example you guys yeah. i'm telling you i can't kill it i can't but <laughs> let's go to um let's go to some comments you have coming in all right so steve worthy he goes preach it and just preach <laughs> And uh, he goes, yeah, the fear of missing out, you know, it helps us justify decisions. He's exactly right. You know, the, the fear and or illusion of missing out, right? This is the problem with kids, right? Teenagers always want to be, they always, you know, they don't want to go to bed if, you know, and they don't know that it's the fear of missing something, but that's what it is. They want to have fun and teenagers feel like they're going to miss something if they're not outside or with their friends or at a party or whatever the deal. Uh, but that kind of overreach is what puts us in predicaments that we can't handle, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so it, it's tough when society has promoted, you know, either purposefully or not certain ideas to you mm -hmm. that constitute value and you believe in the value of those ideas and it is your thoughts that in order to be deemed successful you must achieve those ideas mm. and to not do that constitutes failure and so this is the struggle of every person who may not achieve a college degree or who may not you know become a doctor a lawyer or any other kind of successful person or what society defines as successful a person who may not acquire wealth and riches you know <clears throat> to them they fail and so there's a lot of depression and a lot of dissatisfaction. There's a lot of unfortunate overreach in the, in the name of criminality and other things that people will go beyond boundaries to achieve what society has told them they need to achieve in order to be valuable. Um, and even still, the individual is responsible for their choice. Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. I, I use an example. I was, a, I was, I was originally... Uh, looking to study forensic psychology in school and the forensic psychologists a big part of what uh, one of some of them often do is to testify in court to the mind state of a person and i, I remember I, I said this and i i stick by it you know i don't know if i should say it here uh, but I, I decided against that because i thought i would be able to successfully prove a person's guilt all the time why well you know i'll use this example guy you know he, you know he, struggling to feed his kids worthwhile concern we all have it uh money is tight understood he goes out he reaches an extreme the emotion take over he goes out <clears throat> and he stands by an atm and he waits for some unsuspecting victim to take out some money now the person gets caught and you know he goes and he's you know at the mercy of the court the lawyer's like you know well you know his kids are struggling and you know he's, he's hungry he's trying to feed them and you know have some mercy and and, and it's to suggest a moment of instability, right? That's the logic of that defense, is there's a moment where rationale was suspended. Now that's true. Rationale certainly was suspended or may not have ever been present. Hmm. But there's one moment where rationale shows its face. It's two things, maybe more. It's the fact that that guy put on a hoodie before he left and he hid behind the bushes. 
that shows active intelligence. That shows an understanding of repercussion. Mm -hmm. And so you were aware that what you were doing was wrong. Yeah. And so you're guilty. It's right. premeditated. Right. Right. And so, and, but this is everybody every single day in most instances. Mm -hmm. You know, in most instances where, you know, we, we sit back and we know we, you know, we ain't, our bill is due next month. <laughs> <laughs> or we want to go to Red Lobster. You know what I mean? We want to do, you know, we want a new car or something. And we, yeah, now we know we don't have extra income. Mm -hmm. But somehow in our minds, we think that we'll magically come up on an extra amount of money to catch up on that bill. Come on, man. Really you, like... you already know what you've been. You, you heard this song before. So right. Right. It's the repeat of the same stress and everybody in the house is, is getting all of the, the residue of that stress and the relationship is suffering mm -hmm. because he or she made a bad decision that they've made before and that they will likely make again. Unfortunately, yeah. No discipline, no responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that's what you keep saying. Like you keep saying discipline, responsibility, and consistency. But those yeah. three, right? They're like you say, they're not easy. They're, they're not. It's work. It's awareness and consistent work every single day in the decisions that we make. If every circumstance that you would encounter was an absolute hazard or danger, Right. Mm -hmm. If every decision you would make that would be bad resulted in you falling off a cliff. Go with me for a second. Every circumstance didn't pay your bill off the cliff. You know, abuse your kid off the cliff. You know, domestic violence off the cliff. Random traffic light off the cliff. If everything you've done resulted in some extreme circumstance. Would you lack discipline then too? Yeah, right. No, you would. Awesome. You wouldn't do anything wrong. Yeah. But because we always think we can get away with it, mm -hmm. we push the envelope mm -hmm. and it always comes back to bite us at some point. That was Very. great, Khalid. That was great. That was a great example. I mean, for real. If we thought that way, we will think about it more than twice. <laughs> you knew if the, and it's a matter, it's the level of repercussion. Some of us was like, uh, I'll take the hit and be delinquent in my in my rent or taxes for five months i'll catch up like we'll mm. take that in. because mm. we know it takes longer to get us out of there mm -hmm. so, you know if i if i you know and and that may be intelligent right so you you spend money you know it's gonna throw you behind for three months but you know in six months you'll be back on pace all right as long as you know that you can get it done you know as long as you measure that you can get it done you're costing yourself extra money but you're okay with that mm -hmm. but for the ones who know there's no way out of it like there is no light at the end of the tunnel. You're on a fixed income or you're, you know, you're in a job where you don't get raises or whatever the unfortunate circumstance is. Yeah. You, you don't have that luxury to wait three, <laughs> three months or six months to get up. Right. You know, you're probably unfortunately going to try to borrow it or whatever, or you'll suffer by loss or, or doing something extreme to satisfy the circumstance. This is, this is not a, a, a new idea. This is what people right. do every day. Yeah, but I mean, like you mentioned, it's habit and then they just do it without even thinking about it. It's just That's ingrained, right. you know? That's right. yeah. Oh, Khalid, you have great comments coming up, man. People love you, I'm telling you. Let me go back to you. Thank you so much, you guys, for, for being here with us and sending, uh, writing your comments. And if you haven't clicked like on this awesome content, please do so. Click like for us so that we can see it. Um, all right, so here we go. Your buddy, whose name you're gonna pronounce right now. Joe. <laughs> yeah, he says, with character as a powerhouse for individuals, how can parents strengthen their children characters? Amazing Man, Joe, question. I Amazing question. question. You know, I always say for me, for me, mm -hmm. parenting for me is qualified by my ability to empower my kids to be emotionally disciplined adults. Mm. That is the finish line. It's not sneakers. It's not toys. Not not to buy them. Can you make the right decision while facing adversity as an adult without my protection? That is my goal. And and to Cho's to the point of Cho's question, that only happens when a kid or an individual is rooted, when their sense of value is adequate, 
when they are not pulled to and fro by ideas or illusions of value that would put them in, in dangerous situations, when they have values and, and, and things in place, that's really key. You know, when we allow society to raise our children, you know, when we allow ideas that's presented through, you know, whether they're through video games, YouTube, YouTube has a big effect right now, mm. television, you know, friends and the like to dictate the, the shaping and molding of our children, it's very likely that kid will return home one day and you won't even know that person. Mm hmm. Right. You know, mm -hmm. it won't be the same. That usually happens between 12 and 16 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah, you know, you, you have to start. It's tough, Joe, because kids have a short attention span. Uh, and, and the one thing I understand, and this is through you know, the like this is the value of affirmations. Right. Mm -hmm. The whole value of affirmations is that you say it enough to where it becomes habit. And so it becomes true. Mm -hmm. And that same respect, while your kid is not as attentive or as disciplined and focused to hear a thing enough is to instill them what it is to, I hate to say it this way, but to condition them, you know, to be empowered, you know, and I, you know, for a kid to hear a thing enough until that moment comes that they, you know, they'll snatch it and they'll give it consideration over and over again. But at some point their ability to sustain the idea will be great. That's usually about 18, 19, 20 years old, right? <laughs> and so we have to stay on them. We have to keep them focused because there's many things, emotions and the like, that are going to pull them off track. Mm -hmm. You know, and they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll add this. You know, kids up until four believe they're attached to their parents, literally, especially their mother. Mm -hmm. This is why, they, you know, they cry up until four years old when their parent when their mother leaves. But then they realize at four, this, this is when they realize they're an individual. This is also the same same time, you know, that the kid kind of branches out, starts to move around, not like a turbo tube, but move around with a little bit more <laughs> smart, right? Mm -hmm. And then the kid turns nine. Mm -hmm. Now, nine is when the ability for comprehension comes comes into play in the average human being. It's about the fourth grade, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, and then, you know, and so the kid is now starting to think a little bit more. They understand what they're reading. And then you hit 11, 11 and 12 years old. Puberty comes into play and the brain goes on vacation. You know, between 12 and 16 is the second most vulnerable time in a child's development. I agree. I agree. At that moment that that kid realized that they are a separate person from their family. Up until that point, they've only identified with the family. And now they enter into middle school with a bunch of other confused kids. Oh They'll come home with that imprint on them. This right. is why you don't recognize them. And so you got to really, and this is also the beginning of the end for school performances for many kids. They drop yes. out seventh yeah. and 10th grade. Mm -hmm. So you got to really grab them at that moment and stay on top of them. You know, if I, if I could keep my kids from going outside during those years, I would, you know, because <laughs> I, I, they're so vulnerable. They're so impressionable mm -hmm. and every single ounce of danger lurks. The last thing I'll add in that respect is they are an absolute emotional sponge. Mm -hmm. Every impression has an effect on them. Mm -hmm. And so you have to have the greatest impression on them during that period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kelly, it's, 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 it's true. And this is why like, I, I feel like we should do, we should be available for our children especially at that range of the age range you know we should be available for them because they're confused just like you said they're going to middle school with all the confused children right and they come right. home to, and they tell you in middle school they do talk to you high school is another level but in middle school yeah. they come up and they dump everything that they you know experience in school and that is such an important thing to build just like you said because that will then in high school they will have that little okay you know what i can talk to my parents because they hurt me in middle school you know so it's... but you know teenage you know teenage violence right this mm -hmm. you know this particular age group that i describe is where violence and all the other stuff associated with it is rampant mm-hmm this is not just in any particular locale. This is a human problem. Mm -hmm. I always loosely crack a joke. I say teenagers are crazy, right? Well, you they know, are. So, <laughs> because they are looking to find themselves. If you don't give them something, they'll find it somewhere else. That, oh my gosh, Khalid, that is so important. If you don't give them something, and that is so important. 
That is so important. Like that, that something can translate into, I don't know, clubs, right? I don't know. That yeah. something can translate into. Well, uh, this this is why, in terms of school performance, right? You know, when you get to that age, the, you know, the. The social dynamics far outweighs the importance of academics at that point to mm -hmm. those kids. Right. Mm -hmm. The fact that they were just picked on in the hallway or that their clothes are not adequate according to the standard, right, societal standards, or their boyfriend or girlfriend just dumped them, their friend just cut them off. That is what's preoccupying that 11, 12 year old, 13 year old's mind while they're sitting there, you know, hearing what sounds like Charlie Brown's teacher at the chalkboard. <laughs> they're not even paying attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? And then everything is an obligation to them, everything is a burden to that age group. They mm -hmm. don't like to do nothing but what they want to do. Right. You know, that understanding has to be received or has to be had in our schools if we expect them to perform better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if that particular dynamic is not dealt with, we'll always have struggles in our middle and high schools, certainly in, in neighborhoods where economic challenges uh, and, and other types of challenges compound the problem. This could be Khalid, this could be a whole new show on this because I hear this a lot, especially from my from my kids, and they're like, middle school is the jail. Like I can't wait to go to high school. But it makes sense what you just said right now. Like in high school, they're just like they're like, okay, I'm separate from my parents. I mean, like I'm my own individual. I'm gonna go and do my thing. Right? And uh it's this could it's be a very whole... seldom in high school that you see uh, you know, I'll say disciplined or, or at least mature juniors and seniors fighting. Mm -hmm. it's usually ninth and 10th graders, mm -hmm. you know, and, and certainly you have some others, but it's usually ninth and 10th grade, 10th graders, you know, juniors and seniors are, are approaching, especially seniors, you know, they're way different. They're a lot more sophisticated and they're trying to get out of there, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and so they, you know, this, this dynamic has to be understood, as I mentioned, otherwise the problem will persist. We have the blind leading the blind. And I'll add this for consideration. You know, I, in, in one of the books I wrote, I talk about what I call a two to seven year old struggle. It's the inability to separate words from the objects that they describe, right? And so a two to seven year old believes that an apple is in fact an apple. They believe a table is in fact a table and mm -hmm. not that that is the term assigned to it for categorization. In that same respect, they believe a dog is a dog. And so if you call a kid a name, they believe it. This problem mm -hmm. of an inability to separate words from the objects they describe persists through our adolescence and even into our adulthood. And so adults are affected by name calling. Mm. Person call you the name. This is literally what it is. You revert back to emotion, an emotional two to seven year old. Mm -hmm. And you respond that way. And if adults haven't figured out how to deal with name calling, if there is no mechanism in place to help people understand that, then the struggle with adolescence and, and you know, and, and high school and the like will, will not be solved. And the problems that many people have in their personal lives and relationships and the like will not be solved. And that's where the childhood trauma comes in and shows up in adulthood. You know? <laughs> Certainly one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, but you know what? We're almost, actually, we're kind of over the time, as always, Khalid, with your awesomeness. But uh, for you guys, if you want to check out Khalid's book, you can find it right here on Amazon. Khalid, go ahead and, and do your thing. Yeah, you, you know, you can go to Amazon.com. You can search my name, Khalid Bay. Uh, there's a few of them there, but in this instance, the key to character is the name of the book. You'll find it easier by searching my name. Uh, it's just 1099. It's a quick read. Uh, but I always refer to the books as a reference. It's something that you go back to over and over again. Treat it like a dictionary. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's only through repetition that we can really, uh, you know, receive a true connection and understanding of something. So. You know, For I, sure. I hope if you go purchase it, you enjoy it, and I hope the content is useful. Yeah, I mean, I can I can speak for myself. Like, it, I I love your books just because of the like the thrill, like you know, the adrenaline that I don't know what you're gonna come up with. I, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but um, we have okay, so we have some questions saying thank you. Um, Steve Worth it just wrote that he just ordered it. Thank you so much, Steve. Appreciate um, Steve. 
Yeah, and then we have, okay, so we, oh my gosh, we have so many. Okay, so great conversation, Fulgens, thank you for watching. Um, okay, so we have, Susana always says, great conversation, awesome. Um, other people, okay, Steve Worth it, he writes, agreed, we have become desensitized to the ramifications of our decisions. Absolutely. For sure. And then we have one. OK, I think you covered this, but let's just add it. But what about when they become adults and disrespectful and challenge your parenthood? Well, that that goes. That's the same problem. The thing is, it's not rooted in anything different except the fact that there may have been a struggle for that person to qualify their own value. Right. Any any type, any time you think about one thing, I was talking to somebody the other day. I said, you know, parents, I don't care if you're 50. Your parents are always going to try to tell you what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call that just a foregone conclusion. It's something we all have to learn to respect. Right. It doesn't mean that they're right or wrong, but they're always going to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and, and so but when you talk, I think a big part of from my perspective, you know, when I when I talk to I sit down and I talk to my kids, I use this as an example, not as a rule. You know, it's always an effort to try to help them understand decision. And that's not an easy thing. Mm -hmm. right? it's, you know, I talk to, you know, I'll use my son as, ex as an example. And I say to him, and many people may have a problem with what I'm about to say, but it's true. I say to him, you know, you know, you, you, you put a lot of value in friends. I say you have to be careful of that because your friends are going to change over your lifetime. In fact, most friends you know in your childhood, you probably won't know as an adult. Mm. Now. A person could say, why would you tell them that? I'm telling them that because it's true. My job is to, is to empower him to be able to deal with things and not have him get blindsided and make wrong decisions, right? Mm -hmm. And so but most people, because of societal ideas and the like, won't have those very deliberate and direct conversations with their children, empowering them with enough understanding to make right decision at the right time. I'm not saying that applies to anybody particularly, but I'm just being frank about it. Mm -hmm. you know, we're afraid to say certain things. We have ideas that are colored by societal, you know, residue. Uh, and we haven't figured them out ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the main thing when you're talking about, uh, you know, trying to get a person to understand you. And adulthood is tough to his point. Mm -hmm. That person has their own will at this point. Uh, I'll say to him what I say to my own mother. I love my siblings, but I tell my mother, do not absorb their karma. The greatest thing you can do is offer them suggestions, but you cannot live their lives for them. You hope the best for them. You don't want to see them injured and you'll be there if they are injured. But you would much prefer that they give consideration to the logic. So so the, the thing as hard as it is, as it is as parents, you know, we absorb every pain our kids absorb, even in adulthood. Right. The problem is, once that person has reached adulthood, they are gone, and you got to get back to figuring your own head out. And maybe it's hard to live, though. That's hard. It is hard, but it's you know it, it's hard, but it doesn't change the fact, though. Mm -hmm. And that that's kind of the point. There's a lot of things we would not like to be the way they are. Mm -hmm. We would like for relationships to work. Mm -hmm. Most of them don't. Mm -hmm. We would like to all be wealthy. Most of us won't be. We would like to eliminate and, and not have anybody succumb to cancer and diabetes and heart disease. Not likely. Right. And so because there are certain things and certain uh, decisions, I know, dictates that will cause those things to come into fruition. That is the truth. And that same respect, our, our children, uh, whether they are, you know, uh, let's speak in regards to adult children at this point, will make decisions oftentimes you know, in contrast or and even in defiance to what their parents would suggest. Mm -hmm. The greatest thing they would suggest. It's hard. Mm -hmm. That's all you got. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if by chance the pieces fall apart and you're there to pick them up or tell them to pick their pieces up, which is probably more act, more more uh, useful, mm -hmm. that's that moment when you draw that contrast one more time. You know, and, and it's tough. You know, you hear, don't kick me while I'm down and all that stuff. Well, when else are you going to pay attention to me? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, we oftentimes, unfortunately, need crisis in our lives to choose or to make right decision. Unfortunately. And so I think, you know, maybe one good thing to say to an adult child is to say, don't wait until the crisis strike to come back to listen to me. Mm -hmm. Give consideration to it now.
Right. How right. about we avoid the crisis altogether? That would be beautiful. It's tough. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you it's tough, but I, I go back to your greatest responsibility in all of everything is, is yourself, right? You know, and your thinking, because how you think will determine the impact you have on the people you touch. But if you struggle yourself, if you struggle yourself, while you can certainly have positive effects on people, the, you know, the greatest impact you can have or greater impacts that you can have won't be realized if you haven't made investments in yourself. Again, none of us are, I call, I call perfection a destination, mm -hmm. excuse me, a process, sorry, not a destination. Mm -hmm. you know, most people seek to be perfect. We only can endeavor to be perfect every single day as a process, you know, and I, I don't know that I want to be perfect because then I think I'm, I'm flatline. I want to keep moving. For sure, right? I, I love that. And and I must say, um, Khalid, we've known each other for almost three years, and you have been exactly the same person, although, like, if we go with a character thing, where, like, you don't get to know somebody until you live with them, I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> But what I have seen, you know, like you're consistent throughout everything that you do, that I've seen you do when we work together is very consistent. So I do appreciate that part of your character, if I can say that. So, I appreciate it. Yeah. But, yeah. Again, and that's that's the premise. Let's let's try to be as consistent as possible. You know, mm -hmm. I, I feel for the gentleman who asked about the adult children, because, you know, once they're at that age, they're gone, you know, mm -hmm. and. It's a negotiation now. You got to try to appeal to their logic. That's the greatest thing you can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But oh my gosh, Khalid, listen, we didn't touch on who am I, which is the last one is so important. So what do you say? We have part two sometime? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> right, Robert, too, because yeah. we didn't cover who am I, and that is such an important, like, that's the, the you know, your the last chapter of, of your book. Right? I, I would say of all the books I've written, Key to Character is the most important. I agree. I agree. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And then I wanted to ask you questions about the personality tests that organizations administer in, in trying to determine a person's ability to perform a job. Right? I wanted to touch on that. So it's like, mmm. And then... Uh, I, I've, I've come across one or two that are, that are pretty thorough. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I've come across one or two that are pretty thorough. Um, and so, you know, I, I think all things require consideration. You can't even discredit it if you haven't considered it. So, you know, you have to give things consideration so that you can make a decision that's adequate for you and for your life. For sure. For sure. So D, okay. You're up for conversation two, three, four, and five. <laughs> We got you. We got you. Thank you. So I'm going to do a one last comment here. You guys, thank you so much for being here with us. This is this is amazing. Um, if you guys have not liked officially unofficials page, just click like so that you can be notified when this awesome content comes up. We premiere an episode every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you will also be notified when Khalid comes back. So Khalid, all right, let's go to the last question. Um, actually, it's a comment, I believe. And this is, uh, there we go. Uh -huh. Hey, right? I thought you would like that. All right. The utopian idealism will not have been exactly because every individual has the power of choice. And all too often, they choose the path of crisis. It's absolutely mm. right. I, you know, that, that's my brother, Sharif, not biological, but my brother, nevertheless. We talk about it all the time. There's this, this, this demand for a utopia, absent responsibility. Mm. You know, it's the same in relationship. Everybody wants this utopic relationship with the flowers and all the fluffy <laughs> stuff. But the responsibility and discipline required to have it, nah, they don't want that part. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's the same for the individual in their life. You know, they want to be respected based on what? They want to be appreciated based on what? You know, I, what, what does that matter when you're in your house with your door closed? You know, and that's the thing they have to come to grips with. You know, it's, it's cool to be appreciated. It's cool to be just, you know, to be respected. But 
will your life stop if you don't receive neither? Mm. You still got to be there. Mm-hmm. So to, to even put value on those things which are considered important in all arenas throughout our society, mm-hmm. to be able to exist despite that is a powerful position to be in. Hard, but powerful. Mm-hmm. Once you get once you get there, I'm telling you, <laughs> woo, you have no idea. Aww. <laughs> like the freedom of not being preoccupied with external judgment. Oof. That is freedom. And to close it right, Khalid, to close it. All right, so we're first, first, before we, we go in there. All right, you guys, I want to see you guys doing a lot of hearts right now for Khalid, right? Because he's been awesome. So do a lot of hearts right now on the little thing so he can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Just like click heart, 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 and then um, so he can see it. Anyway, um, so Khalid, what would you say? the key look at them and you see the hearts you see in the hearts Kelly. less for you um all right to close what would you say the key to character is exactly what i stated a second ago i'll i'll state it uh, again now the key to character is realizing that your personality is not you that is the outfit you wear it has a preoccupation with all things external and personality is fueled by emotion and emotion is reaction. It is secondary. Nothing is initiated via emotion. Even the emotional impulses you have are based on some some imagery uh, that you may have experienced first. Emotion is the response. And so to realize that it is secondary, to realize that even our uh, ideas and our uh, the effects that society has on us is in fact secondary. Those things are not the most valuable things about you. Nothing outside you determines your value. You do. And when we understand that, we'll feel a lot better. But the key to character is certainly, certainly realizing that nothing outside you determines your value. Mm, beautiful. Beautiful, Khalid. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here with us. This is awesome. Always enjoy having you in our conversation. And you guys, thank you so much for being here with us. We uh, hope this information was valuable to you. And we will see you on another episode next Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You're watching Officially Unofficial, where we make your lives easier one episode at a time. Bye, you guys. Thank you so much. Khalid, thank you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Bye.